morning, everybody. It is Friday, May 6th, uh, 6.42 in the morning. I've been up for about an hour. Um, I've got to be dealing with the um, the guys doing all the irrigation in the yard. The yard is completely destroyed. Um, just giant channels everywhere have been dug in to lay pipe for the sprinkler system, the replacement and all that kind of stuff. Um, and the dogs can't go into the backyard because of, there's so much stuff going on there. So I'll wake them up uh, probably about nine and then take them for a walk so they can do their business and get them their breakfast. And then I have to head to the studio to start Brett McKenzie's album today. And we should be in the studio for five days on that. And uh, I'm really ex so excited about it. I love working with Brett. I've done a couple of the Muppet movies with him did a solo album, which is going to be coming out. He finished it finally during the pandemic. He he's, lives in New Zealand, and he's half of the group Flight of the Concords. And uh, so he's finally able to get back here, and he's written a ton of songs. So we're back in the studio again. So I'm excited about that. I'll do some filming from the studio. Um, but uh, today I thought uh, I would go visit a, a project that I did that was really cool because this guy was part of my upbringing um, it was somebody I listened to a lot, like uh, in, in the 60s. I really enjoyed him. And that's the great Johnny Rivers. Uh, I'm going to give you some info on this one, but it's worth looking him up because he's had a very long and extensive career. Um, but what, one of the things it says, Johnny Rivers, who was born John Henry Ramistella uh, in 1942, is an American musician, singer, songwriter, and record producer. His repertoire includes pop, folk, blues, and old-time rock and roll. Rivers charted during the 60s and 70s, but remains best known for a string of hit singles between 64 and 68. Among them, Memphis, a Chuck Berry cover, Mountain of Love, a Harold Dorman cover, Seventh Son, a Willie Maybon cover, um, Secret Agent Man, Poor Side of Town, they both uh, hit number one, and Baby, I Need Your Lovin', a 67 cover of the Four Tops single, and Summer Rain. Uh, and it, it talks about him, and it's really interesting. Rivers was born as John Henry Ramistella in New York City of Italian ancestry. His family moved from New York to Bat Baton Rouge, uh, Louisiana. Influenced by the distinctive Louisiana music style, Rivers began playing guitar at the age of eight, taught by his father and uncle. While still in junior high school, he started sitting in with a band called The Rockets, led by Dick Holler, who later wrote a number of hit songs, including Abraham, Martin, and John, and the novelty song Snoopy, Snoopy vs. the Red Baron. Ramistella formed his own band, The Spades, and made his first record at 14 while a student at Baton Rouge High School. Some of their music was recorded on Suede label as early as 1956. On a trip to New York City in 58, Ramistella met Alan Freed, who advised him to change his name to Johnny Rivers after the Mississippi River, which flows through Baton Rouge. Freed also helped uh, Rivers gain several recording contracts on the Gone label. From March of 58 to March of 59, Johnny Rivers le released three records, including Baby Come Back, a non-Christmas version of Elvis Presley, Santa Bring Me Back, uh, bring my baby back to me, uh, none of which sold well. Hold on, I've got to move this over so I can read this a little bit better here. Rivers returned to Baton Rouge in 59 and began, began playing throughout the American South alongside brother Dave Gardner. One evening in Birmingham, Rivers met Audrey Williams, Hank Williams' first wife. She encouraged Rivers to move to Nashville, where he found work as a songwriter and demo singer. Rivers also worked alongside Roger Miller. By this time, Rivers had decided he would never make it as a singer, and song and songwriting became his priority. Then it goes on into the 60s and 70s, where he met uh, James Burton, who was with Elvis and Ricky Nelson, and how they connected, and Elmer Valentine, who had the Whiskey A Go Go, uh, and how he brought Johnny into there as like like the house opener. Um, and there's. Um, a whole bunch of information uh, about him that's, uh, uh, if you just pull up Wikipedia on him. Um, but there was, uh, let me get this other one out here. I just I always love when you can find the info that you're, you're looking for. Hold on, let me jump in here. Um, well, we cut this, this album, it's called Last Train to Memphis. 
and there's a ton of guys on this. I played on a few of the tracks. There's all, it, ton, I mean, tons of musicians cut this because it was cut over the course of a couple of years, and, and, and it was cut in Los Angeles and Tennessee and all kinds of stuff. But uh, most of the work we did was in 1998. And um, I'm going to see if there's any um, more information on this one. It's hard sometimes, boy, to, to get stuff on these. Um, I think just look it up. It's it, it's really he, he's had an, a fascinating career, and uh, I I think he's in my book. I know when uh, I went to the baked potato out here in uh, L.A. Uh, to Hal Blaine's 80th birthday party, and and Johnny was there, and I think I think I got him to flip me off at that. He, I I have to go back and look. I yeah, I've lose track of who's in the book because I did so many pictures, but. Um, but uh, really, really a, a cool guy. And we really had a great time in the studio. So I thought I would just play a few of the tracks that we did. Uh, this one is the title track to the album. Um, and it's called Last Train to Memphis. And uh, I'm looking to see if I can find writing credit, but they're not even showing writing credit. It's somewhere in there. But here, let's just go ahead and listen. So this is Johnny Rivers, Last Train to Memphis. Mama tells me Hold on, let's just get right to the top Lonely sunset Mississippi cotton fields Daddy's crying You can't pay these bills Mama tells me It's gonna be alright Play that gospel music we can make it through the night Heard this black man talking Down Memphis, Tennessee About a place called Beer Street Where the blues are wild and free Mama, can we go there? It sure sounds like fun Daddy said let's do it And the journey has begun Last train to Memphis keeps on calling me Last train to Memphis could be the last chance to find my destiny Here comes that rainbow, how long will it last? Looking out my window, it's going by so get that. fast Mama, can I buy you a brand new Cadillac? Park it in your driveway, shining pink and black. Last train to Memphis keeps on calling me. Last train to Memphis could be the last chance to find my destiny. All my dreams rolling down the track I've got this feeling we ain't never coming back this way Guess I knew somewhere deep inside That Mr. Train would take me for a ride someday This black man talking about Memphis, Tennessee About a place called Beale Street Where the blues are wild and free Mama, can we go there? It sure sounds like fun Daddy said, let's do it And the journey has begun The last train to Memphis Keeps on calling me Last train to Memphis could be the last chance to find my destiny. Last train to Memphis rolling down the track. Last train to Memphis we are leaving. We ain't coming back. We ain't coming back.
cool stuff. Cool stuff. I, I, I was reading up, and there's a ton of info um, about him, his life. So I really, it's really well worth looking up because there are those <clears throat> iconic artists that have really managed to uh, to really traverse their way through decades. And um, it's really, a, it's a fascinating journey because there's so many artists that come they have like that one moment or a little period, you know, of recognition and, and success. Um, but others that have, you know, really uh, been able to sustain through all kinds of stuff, different styles, different uh, moods of the musical, co you know, community. Um, it's, uh, it's worth looking into. Um, here's a song called Gypsy Wind. Let me see if they got any credits on this and I'll have to go back and... And they just keep crediting Johnny. I'll, I'll see what I can find. But here we go. Let's just go ahead and... Hold on. There we go. When that gypsy wind starts to blow Orleans down to Mexico It reminds me Of a girl I knew And some of those crazy things We used to do Backwoods bars where they play all night Drink and dance till the morning when the sun came up, we'd be kissing real slow. Makes you wonder, yeah, where did those sweet times go? For the moon shone down like a golden gem on a long hair wet from a midnight swim. She'd always be wild. Listen to the river flow It reminds me Of a girl I knew Some of those crazy things We used to do
Um, that song and the uh, and the title track on this last train to Memphis were written by just uh, just found it uh, by Johnny Rivers and Jack Tempchin. Um, here's another little blurb here that I, I thought I would share with you. It says Johnny Rivers was about 15 years removed from the recording studio and nearly 20 from a hit when he cut this album between 1996 and 1998. During the 60s and early 70s, Rivers had been one of the most consist consistently successful American solo artists. His covers of previously proven R&B, blues, folk, and pop songs, Chuck Berry's Memphis, Willie Dixon's Seventh Son, Lead Belly's Midnight Special, and new tunes written uh, to order, P.F. Sloan's Secret Agent Man, Jim Hendrix's Summer Rain, River's Own Poor Side of Town, were all quality stuff that have demonstrated proven staying power, and Rivers was able to maintain his career performing them for years. For his studio comeback, Rivers turned to uh, Pete... Um, Goralnik's uh, Elvis Presley biography, Last Train to Memphis, for inspiration. Having grown up in Baton Rouge or Baton Rouge, I don't know how the hell they, they want to pronounce it. Everybody's got their own thing, potato, potato. Uh, after a childhood move from New York, uh, the southern sounds of rockabilly, blues, and country gave Young Rivers his musical foundation. And the tracks here, though not always um, conforming strictly to those genres or paying direct tribute to the region or, or the area are certainly influenced by that earth-shifting music. Rivers co-wrote several of the songs um, uh, uh, songs with Jack Tempchin, who had given him his last big chart with the uh, Swayin' to the Music, Slow Dancing, back in 1977. Like the ballad, the pair's new compositions here are all well-crafted and beautifully performed. Rivers' voice is as strong and unmistakable as it was in his hit-making days. His own compositions, with the exception of the opening down at the House of Blues, which comes off as a commercial for the same name chain of clubs, regardless of any lack of intent to do so, are also strong. Nonetheless, his true Johnny Riversness kicks uh, into full gear when he returns to familiar territory of uh, remaking oldies, interpretation of Muddy Waters, Rolling Stone, and the old Casinos hit, uh, You Can Tell Me Goodbye, written by John D. Um, Loudermilk, among other highlights, the Collector's Choice edition of this album, issued in 2006, tacks on a bo uh, bonus track, a tribute to one of Memphis's other true heroes, Carl, Carl, Carl Perkins, sorry, it's really early in the morning, uh, titled Blue Suede Blues. So that's that. I'm going to play, I've got one more song here called Chicago Bound. And... Uh, but it's great. I just love the feel of it. I mean, you, I can hear so many influences in it, and then you can also hear some of the stuff where you go, God, you know, Buffett could have recorded that, and uh, it's just got that that easy, just lovely feeling to it. So here's Chicago Bound. <laughs> Baby, she begged me, Daddy, please don't go But I left that town You know I left that town When I left out of Georgia You know I was Memphis bound Well, I stayed in Memphis in 1969 The woman I've been loving She didn't pay me no mind But I left that town You know I left that town When I left out of Memphis You know I was St. Louis bound Jerry Red, and I left that town. You know, I left that town. Yeah. When I left St. Louis, you know, I was Chicago bound.
Love it. Love it. Uh, there's a pile of good stuff on this album. I saw, I highly recommended this one, The Last Train to Memphis. And uh, just digging through there, just like it's a who's who of players on this on this album. So uh, highly recommend it. And, it's, uh, and, and just, you know, it's fun because Johnny Rivers was such a part of, like I said, you know, in the 60s, back when I was in high school and college, I mean, I was listening to a lot of Johnny Rivers. And uh, so to actually... It's a trip when you walk in the studio and there's the guy. It was I was that way with Dion when I worked with Dion. You know, there, there's so many of them. I'm st at the end of the day, I'm still fanboy. You know, to walk in the studio and be and be hanging with Joe Cocker or Barbara Streisand or any of these people. You know, Andy Willie, uh, Andy Williams, Andy Griffith. <clears throat> it's a it's something I I do still pinch myself all the time, even though I enjoy pinching myself, so that's not really an issue. Um, but, uh, uh, so I'm gonna, I'm gonna get running here. I'm gonna uh, pack up my uh, Dingwall and Frankenstein and my Warwick basses, and uh, we'll be heading off to the studio. Got my Euphonic Audio Combo Amp for, for, for recording too. And uh, and then when I get home from work tonight, I will be back working on Lyle Lovett songs. So I've mean, got a full dance card here. Uh, I might post a little thing. I, I filmed a little yesterday of my backyard. Maybe after I get this video posted, I'll throw that one on just so you can see the, the joy I'm having back there. Uh, you know, hopefully at the end of the day, <clears throat> excuse me, really early, it'll have been well worthwhile because my backyard's really been suffering. It's ancient sprinklers and half of them didn't work and stuff. And this is going to cover it all and be real efficient so that uh, things can, you know, thrive, but, you know, not getting completely devastated by the the drought uh, that we're facing here in California. Uh, so, you know, there's a lot of water restrictions going into to play and stuff like that. So I'm off to do that. Um, again, my heart is <laughs> with the people of Ukraine. My heart is with the people of America as so many of our liberties are trying to be taken away from us. Um, it's shocking at times that the majority of people's thoughts don't seem to mean anything to this, um, uh, especially, to, you know, and I'm, I'm going to say it, to the, to the right. They just don't care. They want to eliminate so many things that are that are such a staple of of a democratic life. You know, it's just it just horrifies me every day that these people are even alive and breathing. It's just crazy. Um, but watching this battle in Ukraine at, at this steel mill where there's still women and children hunkering down, and the Russians are just trying to blow this thing off the face of the earth. It's just how do you go to sleep at night knowing you're Full intent every day is to wake up and slaughter innocent people. I just, I don't get it. And COVID's climbing. It's starting to go back up. They said there's not as many hospitalizations with this new variant, but the variant is very, very um, aggressive. So please be careful. You know, as soon as they drop mandates, that's where the numbers start going back up again. What could possibly go wrong by telling people not to wear masks or don't worry about your vaccinations? I was at the supermarket yesterday. I hardly saw a person in there with a mask on. I mean, I had mine on and I was keeping my distance and I wiped down the handles of the shopping cart and all that stuff. These people walk around like nothing's ever happened. It's just, it just blows my mind. So I'm going to go make some music today with Brett McKenzie and company. I know that Chris Caswell is going to be there and Dean Parks is going to be, there's going to be a whole bunch of cats and it's going to be a lot of fun because Brett's really gifted. And another thing that was really great was when I toured with Judith Owen and we were using a string section, our string section was Lizzie Ball, Megan Cassidy and, and Gabriella Swallow. Well, I've been talking to Gabby and she and uh, and Megan are uh, on the road with the great Hiromi, who's just this monstrous jazz pianist. And I don't even want to say jazz. She can do anything. Um, I've seen her uh, in, in a number of configurations, and she's a, just a powerful force of nature. And uh, there's a great video of, of one of the recent concerts, and then in, in it, um, Gabby takes over as like uh, upright walking bass and just is killing it. Uh, and it's, I'm so proud of the girls, man. They are out there just smoking. 
And, uh, and I think their tour is going to last throughout the year, which I'm really happy for them. It's just great. But if you get a chance, just kind of pull up Hiromi and, um, on YouTube and look for a recent performance, which would be 22 recently, and watch them. And, and it's just fabulous. It's just as good as it gets. So I'm going to get going here. The guys should be here any minute now. Uh, to start working in the backyard and uh, I try to keep an eye on things just in case there's any questions. So I'm out of here and I will be back tomorrow. Now I'll have some, hopefully some studio footage for you. So we'll see. Okay, bye.